What feels like a lifetime ago, I created a car forum website known as Boost Cruising. Sure, it was a place for car meets, but it became so much more than that. It was responsible for marriages, babies, raising money for charity, helping police fight crime funnily enough, giving the middle finger to big businesses, and countless hours of fun and memories. So, let's wind the clock back to 2001. I was a 19 year old driving a sports car, going out with my mates, just driving, but a recurring theme was constantly being pulled over by the police. In my young mind, I totally didn't understand it. Even though half the time we were in places where there were other cars doing probably skids or races or something stupid like that. You know, usual shenanigans back in the day. But nonetheless, I was naive about it perhaps, and I got so pissed off about it, I created a website called Anti-Police and bought myself a digital camera to take photos to go along with writing about our nights out cruising, particularly if we could get photos of the police. It was a target thing to do. Initially, a mate of mine's goal was to just use my camera and take photos of the police as often as he possibly could. There was even an occasion where I felt the police were using excessive force on a guy, so I took a photo of the incident. Next minute, the officer confiscated my camera, saying that the flash of my camera was police brutality and abuse akin to throwing a punch and threatened to arrest me. My camera was confiscated, I was totally belligerent, I was totally losing my shit, and my mates had to calm me down before I was getting thrown in the back of the cop car as well. Like seriously, I took a photo of a guy being arrested, and the cop confiscated my camera. Like, that would never happen these days. Anyway, back to owning a website known as Anti-Police, I quickly realised that this idea was likely going to get some unwanted attention and cause me some serious drama, like Anti-Police, like, you could take that in so many nefarious ways. The website anti-police didn't last long at all and I started fielding ideas for a website name amongst my mates. We were absolutely obsessed with turbo cars, especially how much boost they were running, and heading out each night was known as cruising. So the name boost and cruising was born and it felt like a perfect name for a website that documents going out, cruising and looking for turbo cars. When we go out at night, just cruising, we'd go hunting for any action that we could find. And by action, I could mean a whole bunch of different things. Just whatever settles the boredom that was in our brains because we just didn't have anything else to do. It could simply mean finding a damn fine car, spotting something as luxurious as a Ferrari perhaps, but more commonly, it'd be like, ah, there's a skyline, go after the skyline. But action could also mean a whole bunch of other things too, like a whole bunch of nice cars just at Macca's or a service station or a BP service station in particular seemed to be very popular then. It was a perfect blend for men enjoying their cars and women were, if I was somehow involved, that was great. It was a perfect match. I had a girlfriend at the time who's now my wife for 20 years and I've got two beautiful daughters. So I don't have personal experience of hookups, but heck, I certainly knew it very much happened. At some point, People were joking but Boost Cruising was known as Boost Dating because, ah, so many people had met. But it was a way to meet like-minded people. But I digress. The most exciting thing to look for on a night out driving was just finding another group of cars and tagging along following them to see where that group of cars were going. Where were they heading to? Were they heading out to do some skids or races on the highway or just to meet up in another park or a service station or a Macca's? Who knows? But it was all about just getting out and driving. And this could literally involve hundreds of kilometres in a single night. Returning at sunrise was a particularly regular ha thing to happen, especially on Thursdays for some reason, and then again on Friday, and then on Saturday. It was a good thing that petrol was so cheap back then. I know that I did more than 50,000 k's in a single year, and a lot of the guys did. For some reason, those Thursday nights were in particularly big and you'd get back at sunrise and getting up for work the next day was like, oh, a serious challenge. Now, sure, I had this idea that Boost Cruising would be a place where I'd take photos and tell a story of going out each night, just cruising around with our mates and just documenting the car scene at the time in our local area. But like every good idea, you need more than just a good idea. Your idea also needs some promotion and a platform to spread the idea so that other people know about it. And I learnt this multiple times over my career in the next 25 years, in my work life at least. But that's a story for another day. At this point in 2001, Boost Cruising was just a silly website that I'd created with no real expectations of what it might become at this point. So, how did that idea get promotion? Well, 
I got involved with some S13 groups because I had a Nissan Silvia and S13 series covered the Nissan Silvia and the 180SX. And that was a really popular import car in the early 2000s in our area. And I met some people through a local club called the Briz S13 Club, which was just an email news group. Now that's going back away. Now, what really helped was that meeting people through those groups, I was introduced to a friend of a friend who was an IRC op in the IRC channel called Cars on Ostnet. Now, IRC was a very early chat platform, was extremely popular back in the day. And being an op or a moderator or an operator, IRC cop, whatever you like to call it, um, being an op of a popular channel at the time was like, oh my God, this guy is someone I really want to know. And so it was through meeting these like-minded people and getting involved in the Cars channel on Ostnet in particular, on that IRC channel, I regularly lobbied you guys to put boostcruising.com in the channel description so that it would promote the website. And to this day, I still credit this very early promotion to be what seeded the website and made it really take off. It really got the word out as IRC really was the popular way to communicate at the time because forums were in their infancy. Chat, online chat was the big thing to do. Anyway, as an introverted nerd who loved cars, this whole situation was a maze balls for me. I was able to connect my love of cars with technology while spending loads of time with my mates. It was an absolutely beautiful thing. So the website actually quickly turned into a pseudo news site for the car scene at the time. It shared our experiences and then other people wanted to share their experiences as well. And that led to the website growing and becoming an a early version of the social network really, because people could upload their own experiences and it just snowballed from there. So I had a few things going in my favor. I was in the tech industry. I had a job with an internet service provider that helped me out a bit and I had a love of cars and I had a digital camera and I was able to connect all these things together. And that allowed me to create areas such as members rides, cruising and events, where user generated content was a very early concept at the time. Other people could upload their own photos and upload their cars and their stories and then share that with others as well. And that enabled Boost Cruising to become more than just my story. It allowed other people to share their stories and then that made it snowball even further. And that ability to upload your own car and your own stories on the website was a very new idea at the time and other sites couldn't replicate that easily. So that gave it a competitive advantage, so you could say. And Boost Cruising just became even bigger and bigger in our corner of the state. Over the next few years, lots of other car forums would come along and the whole concept of discussion forums online completely blew up. So much so that many of these forums would get overloaded and they would have a lot of downtime. It was very common for these sites to go down because just too many people were using them and the servers behind them, there just wasn't enough server power to power them. It became a regular event for people to moan about even Boost being down quite often. And on IRC, there's just countless times where people are like, is Boost down again? What's going on? It was a regular occurrence and it was an uphill battle. But I learned hurt heaps through it and that actually catapulted part of my career really. But once I got the technology side sorted, despite my connections with work and so forth, I was left with a website that was quite costly to own. To cover these costs, I got in touch with other car websites that I knew were suffering from this downtime issue and this overload issue. And I ended up posting a whole bunch of other forums in Australia that people from back in the day would remember them, like skylinesaustralia.com and nissansylvia.com, which turned into hardtuned.net. Um, hosting these guys' sites, I charged them a nominal fee so that I could help cover my costs. The goal here was just to cover my own costs, not to make money. And these guys weren't making much money either at all. Like we were all just struggling to keep our websites online and running and cover the costs of running them. But that also came with the additional challenge of hosting even more traffic. Like I wasn't just dealing with the number of visitors that came to Boost Cruising anymore. I was also dealing with the number of visitors that went to skylinesaustralia.com and nissansylvia.com. Once you joined all these sites together, I was dealing with a lot more traffic than I'd ever anticipated. Thankfully, my career had progressed a bit at the time and I was working for another internet business that was also dealing with very popular websites. And this helped teach me about load balancing and clustering and lots of buzzwords like that. 
but it was basically the very early version of cloud for technology that's commonplace these days. Anyway, I don't think too many people are really interested in the technology side of it, but needless to say, it was a genuine challenge to keep all of these websites operational. I was super proud of it though. I was super proud, but it was just me. I was solely responsible for hosting some of the biggest Australian car forums in Australia. And that was a real point of proud for me. I was really proud of it. Now, this is where a bit of an infliction point really happens. We're talking five years in, around about 2006. And over the long term, it turned into several regrets. But uh, life lessons were had too. See, online classifieds or posting things for sale was starting to become a really big thing. And car forums and all sorts of other forums, I'm sure, but the car forums in particular just became swamped with people posting stuff for sale. The response to this on Boost Cruising and other car websites was to set up dedicated categories for posting things for sale. The problem with this though is that forums weren't really set up for that and people would bump their posts to get them at the top of the page and that became super competitive. Over time, people wanted to sell more than just their cars or their car parts. They also wanted to sell their fish tank or something stupid like that. And Every car forum at the time had turned into having a set of classifieds. Classifieds absolutely dominated the forums over time. But the silly thing about forums is they weren't set up to be a classified system, especially in the early days. So I spent a lot of time customizing the forums to be more of a classifieds enabled system. So much so that the advertising revenue from that side of things finally covered costs and then some. I was absolutely stoked. No longer was I suffering a financial burden of how to keep this website running and I didn't have to ask people for money anymore. It started to turn coin and I was absolutely stoked. However, I was always trying really hard to keep the community happy because the people that used the website were important to me. But who started to develop a reputation for tire kickers and trolls? And in hindsight, that's just because it was popular and that's dominant on every selling platform these days. Facebook, Gumtree, whatever. It's all over the place these days. But back then, People just thought the whole tire kicker thing was a boost cruising problem. This caused a lot of controversy amongst the boost community. So much so that I ended up turning the classified system into a spin-off website known as Boost Classifieds. The idea was to have the classifieds over here and then have the boost cruising car community content over here. This way, the classifieds could be its own thing, selling cars and so forth, and the forums could continue to function with the members ride section, cruising section, all the user-generated content that people actually loved in the beginning. You see, the way that classifieds dominated the forums just detracted from the discussions that people wanted to have. If the latest posts or the news feed, for example, was filled with cars for sale, then you'd be pissed off if you were looking for what was the latest thing going on in the car scene at the time. It was totally understandable, and that was the background reason why I split it all up. However, these attempts to... Uh, appease people with boost cruising and having a separate classified site also caused other spin-off sites such as boost off topic and it turned into a bit of a nightmare especially with the forums category off topic actually there's a bit of a story on that one now off topic was a bit like reddit i suppose where people would just dribble shit day in day out it could be anything and by the name suggests it was off topic it didn't have to be about cars because another strong thing that people would expect in the day was that the website and the forums were about cars. So if you want to talk about something other than cars, this wasn't the place to do it. But more and more people demanded it and that spun off this idea of off topic. Now, being off topic as the name suggests, the rules were pretty relaxed. People would just post whatever they wanted and it was extremely popular really. Um, Simply because Boost Cruising was a reliable and functioning forum at the time, I assume, or just because there was a mass number of people there. Whatever it may be, the community wanted this off-topic area, and it really took off. The problem, though, is that Google came along with its band stick and went, Oi, you've got some not non-safe-for-work content there. You've got some adult content there. We don't like close-ups or breasts, cleavage, butts, whatever it may be. Google's like, no, nah, no way. We're shutting you down. So the advertising revenue just came to a complete stop. I was left with a really, really shit situation. Uh, the site had been a financial burden for years and then it started to turn a good dollar for a couple. And then all of a sudden, 
all that income just came to a stop. And I needed to resolve this problem with Google. It just had to be solved. I was left with a real problem. I couldn't get rid of Off Topic because it was so popular. I needed to find a way to appease the community because without the community, there would be no website. There were massive arguments amongst myself and the moderators and the regular users. But from my point of view, I needed to keep Google happy. I had no choice. So finding a middle ground between keeping the community happy and keeping Google happy was a real challenge. So, and I know it, lots of people with memories from Boost Cruising was having their posts edited or deleted or getting suspended or banned or something along those lines. And there was a lot of rage that went with it. High emotions, and that's why everyone remembers it. There were, but behind it all, there was a strong rationale behind it from my point of view that just couldn't be avoided. So with these Google policies, I had to come up with a set of community guidelines for Boost Cruising as well. And that was needed to keep Google's advertisers happy so that they would put their ads on Boost Cruising. It was just the way it was. This is so much more prevalent these days. Back in 2010, it was in its infancy. Now we see a possible overuse of censorship, I would argue, on platforms like Facebook and Instagram and TikTok, etc where the community guidelines are just intense. So I needed to come up with a middle ground to allow the advertising to continue and lodge an appeal and try and get things going again. So what I did was I split off Boost Off Topic to its own site, just like the classifieds were broken off to their own site. And the hope was that this would resolve the problem. So now we had three websites, Boost Cruising, Boost Classifieds, and Boost Off Topic. I did my very best to connect the three of them in such a way that it was a cohesive experience amongst the three sites and you would stay logged in, for example. In hindsight, I believe that the splitting of the sites just caused an even more fractured community. And this was at a time when other competitors were coming into this space, such as MySpace, for example, and Facebook, and so forth. They were becoming better options. And so Facebook was starting to take off, and I saw that in the Boost Cruising forums. The activity there just began to subside and really die off. Faced with this problem where the website overall seemed to be dying off, I started to put a lot of effort into it and competing against Facebook just wasn't working out. So all my efforts ended up went into the classifieds and I went through a year or two there where I invested every cent I'd earned and then some back into it to try and make the classifieds succeed. I'd spent money on graphics designers, website developers, promoters and traditional marketing campaigns such as putting boost classifieds on buses and billboards in other states and try and make it the bigger and better website that I thought it could be. Boost classifieds had become the number one free car sales website in the country and I'd received multiple awards from independent companies that were evaluating websites at the time. I was enthusiastic about all this. I thought I was onto something good. <laughs> the stupid thing though is that all of those billboards and all of those marketing campaigns and all of those efforts didn't result in any noticeable increase in traffic to the website at all. To make things worse, this also brought attention that I didn't want. Um, even though there were some productive discussions with some car dealerships and another competitive website known as Cars Guide at the time, which I think was owned by one of the big news corps in Australia, However, the biggest commercial competitor, Car Sales, took a different approach and started sending some legal letters and demands my way. Look, receiving legal letters like this scared the crap out of me, to be honest. Um, I didn't have the means to fight someone like Car Sales. In hindsight, I now know that when you get this type of attention, it's actually a good thing. It, it suggests that the competitors feel threatened and they want to squash you down, but I didn't know any better and it demotivated me. It really did. It was at a time when I was financially stressed and I had invested a lot of time and money into trying to make the classifieds a real business. But it wasn't showing any signs of turning around. After all, the business model was to offer free classifieds, not a paid model like car sales. So every listing on my website wasn't earning me $100 or something like that. It actually was earning next to nothing because I was just getting advertising revenue. And advertising revenue is far less than people think. You're looking at a few dollars per thousand page views. That's nothing compared to the business model for car sales. And car sales has absolutely grown, become a massive public company. They were on the right track. From my point of view, 
my investment strategy had failed and it turned into a significant financial burden all over again. But this time, it was my fault. To make things worse, Facebook was starting to introduce Facebook Marketplace and Gumtree became the dominant free website, which is now owned by eBay. And car sales was willing to spend money on legal threats towards me. I was left in a bit of a corner. I felt that I was a small business that was just getting blown away by big business. We're talking global giants in the case of eBay, like shit. And Facebook, oh my God. I felt that I couldn't possibly compete and I pulled back my efforts. I retreated and the website basically dissipated from there and it really doesn't exist much at all now. It's still there, but no one visits it. It's, it's just a pointless exercise. It's a pointless existence at this point. Now, I have the type of personality where I always look for a silver lining in any shit situation. It pisses some people off. It's just the way I think. And I always try to remind myself, for anyone that cares to listen, that to fail is to learn. And as long as you learn, then there's no such thing as a complete failure. And boy, did I learn a lot of things. Significant lessons in business, technology, relationships, and just general life experience, I suppose. Heck, I went on to do bigger and better things. And at one point, I completely embraced Facebook and built up a network of influencers on Facebook that had collaborated and we made a lot of money to such a point that Facebook banned me for it. <laughs> when I got banned on Facebook, it completely screwed me. I lost all those Facebook connections and many of my friends' connections that I had through there. But once again, I'd seen this before where a big company screws me. But that's a story for another day. And so I'm gonna to have to break these up into several videos. Next one, I'll talk about other people's experiences and what boost cruising meant to them and some real stories about the shenanigans that we all got up to. There's so much more to talk about. Nostalgia, including the charity events, the meets, members' rides, fondest memories, etc. If you have some memories to share, please comment and I'll work it into the follow-up videos. All right, thanks guys.